This is an interview with Mrs. Elizabeth Canavan in her home at 21 Sherman Street, Newport, Rhode Island. It will be concerned with Mrs. Canavan's life history and is part of the Newport Historical Society's Oral History Project. The interviewer is Beth Everett, the date September 18, 1984. Mrs. Canavan, do you consent to have this conversation taped? Yes. All right. Let's start off with my asking you, where were you born? I was born in Franklin, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And were your parents born there also? Yes. Both of them were natives of Virginia. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was your father's occupation? Farmer. He was a farmer, huh? Did your mother do any kind of work outside the house herself? No. She took care of the children. How many children were there in the family? Seven. Seven of you. Uh -huh. And um, when did you leave Virginia? When, when did you leave Virginia? 1920. 1920. And where did you go then? New York. Oh, you went to New York. Uh -huh. Well, when did you finally come to Newport? 1932. Mm -hmm. And why did you decide to come to Newport? My husband was, it was during depression, and my husband couldn't find work only here, so I came here uh -huh. to be with him. Uh -huh. All right, well, let's go back a little bit now and talk about your younger years. Uh, did you go to school in Virginia? Yes. Mm -hmm. And which, what classes, what sort of classes did you like best? You have any preferences? I like, uh, <laughs> can you think of it? chemistry? I like that. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you take any more training in uh, chemistry after you finished school in Virginia? No. It was just what you liked there. Yes. Did you uh, have a nickname in school? Bess. Oh, they called you Bess. Uh -huh. um, did your mother and father teach you any skills that uh, helped you? Mm -hmm. Nothing special. Nothing mm -hmm. special. Mm -hmm. No. Then when you finished there and, and moved away, did you have any more training? No, mm -hmm. oh, only in nursing. Well, you did take nursing training. Was that in New York or where? That was here. In Newport. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, um, I'm interested now in the topic of religion. Did your parents go to church? Oh, yes. They were faithful? Yes. yes. Uh, which church did they go to? They went to Shallow Baptist. Shallow Baptist. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you were faithful? Yes. Did you go to Sunday school and church folk? Yes. Uh -huh. Did you, uh, what sort of things did you do in the church in Virginia? Were you, I guess you were too young to teach Sunday school, were you? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're also a member of the church in Newport. Yes. And which church do you go to? I go to the Community Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And where is it? That's uh, Fifth and Broadway. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that moved there fairly recently. Yes, it did. First, uh, I went to Shallow when I first came to Newport. Uh -huh. And that's on School Street down there. And the two churches, Mount Olivet and Shallow, merged. And now it's uh, Community Baptist. Uh -huh. I see. Uh, who was the minister when you first joined the church, can you remember? T.B. Livingston, Reverend T.B. Livingston. Was that L-I-V-I-N-G-S-T-O-N? That's right. And who is the minister today? Reverend Robert Williams. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that there's quite a story connected with your church. It used to be on Thames Street. That's right. On Thames Street. Well, uh, why, why was it moved? What happened? Well, they decided that when they joined, they would move uh, to a new uh, location. When the two churches combined? Yes. Uh -huh. And they did. They decided to move here where they are now. Um, 
that the church they were in on Thames Street was uh, a temporary residence, a temporary um, location. Yes. But how long was how long did the two churches stay there? Mm -hmm. Many years. Not too many. Mm -hmm. No. And but all that time, were you planning the new church? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. They uh they decide to, to build right, you know, right away as soon as they could get located somewhere else. Mm -hmm. How did you decide on that location, the new location? Well, we had a committee to go out and look for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they found this and the church agreed with them. Were you on the committee? No. Mm -hmm. I know that you do quite a lot in your church. Can you, what sort of things have you done and do you do? I'm a dignitary teacher, a member of most of the groups that have volunteer um, visitation committee and missionary and just about <laughs> every, everything you can do. <laughs> yes. What do you do as a missionary? Well, we um, feed the poor once a week. On Saturday, we uh, feed a friend. We give meals. Last Saturday, uh, I was on the job. I cooked and oh, uh, helped to feed them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a good kitchen in your church? Oh, I love the kitchen. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Mm -hmm. and I love the home. Who decides what you'll cook? The missionaries. You okay. make up your menus. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you find a lot of people coming for the meals? Oh, yes. Well, sometimes more than others. They vary. Mm -hmm. Last week we had 29. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have 40 or 50. Does it? Do you have more in the wintertime? Well, yes, I believe we do. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's really a lot of hunger in Newport these days? Well, it looks like it. I don't know. I didn't think it was any before. We started defeating them, and mm -hmm. we find there's quite a few hungry people out there. Well, I'd like to um, know a little more about building your new church. I remember seeing a picture in the newspaper when it was finished and you were marching down the street from the old church to the new and you were right there in the front. <laughs> I was surprised. I didn't expect that. <laughs> well, how did you do? Did you meet in the old church as usual and then everybody got together and just marched to the new church? How was that? No, done? we for a year or more, we... Uh, Fellowship, or we had service in the United Baptist Church. Oh. They gave us the privilege of meeting and having our service there, and we did. So we met March from the United Baptist Church. Um, so you were using the Union Baptist Church yeah. for how long? For more than a year. More than a year. Yeah. So when your, first, your church was finally finished, uh, you you went to your the Union Baptist Church, United and Baptist, you, and you all got up and marched from there. Uh -huh. Those that couldn't march, they went in the in the wagon on the <laughs> bus. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, then you had your service, your first service there. There. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Williams preached the sermon. That's right. How many people were there? I, I didn't count them. Well, I know. <laughs> There's quite a few. There's quite a few people there. How how big a congregation do you think you have? I think we have about 300 or more on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's a big mm -hmm. church. That must be the biggest one in, in Newport. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, well I don't we, know do have a, we do have a nice congregation. Mm -hmm. The church is just about full every Sunday. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your neighborhood. Um, when you came to Newport, did you come to live right here at that time? No, 90 Williams Street. 90 Williams Street. And how long did you live there? 
from 32 to 72. Oh, you were there a long time then. Uh, what kind of neighborhood did you have there? Did you like your neighbors? Yes, yes, it was very nice neighbors. Now, um, there, are, there are quite a few commercial places along William Street these days, aren't there? Yes. Close to Almax. Was it like that when you moved there? No. What was it like when you moved? It was very quiet. It was residents both uh, across the street and on my street. The shopping center was not there. Mm -hmm. It was built while I was there. It was? Yes. Were you sorry to see that or were you glad? I was glad. Were you? <laughs> yes. Have a convenient place to shop? It sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> did it upset many of the people living around there? Did they lose their homes or did it matter to them? No, it was one big estate over there, the White Houses. I see. And that they took that. It was just one house across the street. It was a friend of mine and she moved to New York. See, and so it didn't disturb me. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, now, let's go back to your your marriage to your husband. Did you meet him? In, you met him in New York, I believe. And no. He, I Mr. met Canavan. Mr. Canavan here. Oh, you did? You, oh, after you moved to Newport? Yes. Uh -huh. um, well, when did you marry Mr. Canavan? Do you remember what year that was? Yes. And mm -hmm. You met him when? I married Mr. Canavan on August the 3rd, 1957. Uh -huh. And um, where was he from? Was he a new porter? No, he was from Con uh, Con Connellville, Pennsylvania. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. So you lived at 90 William Street. Was that uh, his house? Did he already have that house when you were married? Did you no. buy it together? No. Mm -hmm. I bought it before I met him. Oh, it was your house. It's my oh, house. <laughs> I see. Um, um, now, you had children before you married Mr. Canavan, I believe. Um, and did he have children? He had one son. Uh huh. Well, will you tell me uh, what your children's names were? Well, my oldest girl was named Elsie May. And uh, Ricks at that time. Mm -hmm. And her sister was named Maji Lee. Mm -hmm. And the baby was named Ruth Lydia Patricia. Mm -hmm. uh, did they come to Newport with you? No. Oh, they, did, they were too old to come that far? No, mm -hmm. they were. I had acquired them after I got to Newport. They lost their mother, and I went to Virginia, and I brought them here. The baby was four years old at that time, the little girl, and I, I raised him. Oh, well, were, were they members of your family? Uh, yes, they were my cousins. They were your cousins and mm -hmm. children. But they called me mama. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh -huh. um, where are they now? Oh, you told me. One's in... No, you didn't tell me. You told yes. me earlier. One's in Maplewood, New Jersey, the oldest girl. She's married, got four children, mm -hmm. girls. And Margie's in Providence, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. She's married and got four children, two boys and two girls. And Lydia uh, is uh, Lydia Ruth Patricia. She's here in Newport. She lives five and a half flat in court. Oh, I see. Does she? Uh, she she is married, married mm -hmm. but she doesn't have any children. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a lot of grandchildren. <laughs> um, well, then, then they went to school here in Newport. They went to, yes, they finished here at the high school in Newport, all of them. They were already high school age, were they? Or how old were they when you adopted them? The baby was four. Oh, they were very young. Yeah, they, they were all little. Yes. Uh -huh. So they started to, well, they went to school in Newport. In Newport, from Earth. yeah. Which schools did they go to? They all went to, in the end, they went to 
Rogers. Rogers. Yes, okay. where it is now. Mm -hmm. The girl Thompson? Yes, the younger one. Mm -hmm. I mean, the older ones went to Thompson Junior High. And did they go to the same grammar school? Same grammar school. Which one was that? What's this school? The one that's closed now? Yes. Was it Calendar? Is that a one school? was over here. Uh, over this way. <laughs> anyway, they went to uh, yeah. grammar school here. Yeah. Um, do you feel that you were a, a strict disciplinarian, or were you very easy with your children? Well, they thought I was strict. <laughs> <laughs> was your husband strict, too? Yes, yes, he Both was. Of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, but still, they um, <laughs> turned out all right. Huh? Right. Well, did you used to tell them stories? Oh, yes, uh -huh. yes. What sort of stories did you tell? Well, um, Snow, Snow White and different... Uh, all the usual fairy tales. All the usual fairy tales. Did you tell them stories about your childhood and, and the growing up where you did? Oh, yes. Because I know that's a good way to tell children. Yes, indeed. Uh -huh. And they had nice times, too. Where did they play? In your neighborhood? They played mostly in my neighborhood. They had parties in the backyard, in the garage there, and, and they just had a grand time. They had other children to come over and they play with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, so different from today. I'm sure. Were there a lot of children in the neighborhood for them to play with? Well, yes, there uh -huh. was quite a few. What sort of games did they play? They played all kinds of games. The, the um, uh, blindfold, the uh -huh. pen in the donkey's tail. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I don't know, spinning the bottle, I guess. Too. Just all the usual children. Yeah, all the uh -huh. usual children play. Were you ambitious for them? Did you want them to do uh, anything special when they grew up? Oh yes, I did. Mm -hmm. The oldest girl is a a nurse, a registered nurse. Is that so? Yes, I want them all to be something. I want them to be whatever they wanted to be, mm -hmm. and I did my best to help them. Mm -hmm. Where did she take her training? In Newport? No, A&T College, North Carolina. Oh, she went back to the South. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I wonder, well, you lived on uh, William Street until 1972, you said. Yes. Now, where did you move from there? Here. You moved here to 21 Sherman Street. That's right. Uh, did you buy this house yes. again? Mm -hmm. And why did you choose this neighborhood? Well, the house was here. I liked the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no special reason. It's just the, the house was the right house. <laughs> yes. Uh <-huh. laughs> it's a very nice neighborhood. It's yes, so it quiet, is. It is peaceful. quiet. Well, did it look much different then from the way it looks now? No. You didn't see many, haven't seen many changes? No, I haven't done any changing of it. Uh-huh. Um, do you, you just like it the way it is, or would you like to see anything different? I mean, the whole neighborhood, the whole street, not oh. just your house. Oh, yes. Uh, it's pretty good as it is. Mm -hmm. You like your neighbors? Oh, yes. You know most of them? Well... I believe I do, mm -hmm. and they're all very nice, very nice. Do um, most of the people in this neighborhood own their houses, or are there apartments, or is it a mix, or what? I think the most of them own the house. Mm -hmm. There are a few apartments. This house there. Is there sort of a good neighborhood feeling? Do people? Is there anybody you feel that you could count on if you had trouble, for instance? Oh, you yes. Go to? Yes, yes. You visit back and forth, do you? No. <laughs> it's not that kind of friend. No, so. no. We don't visit very much, but if you need them, they come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Heather, when you lived on William Street, 
where there are no shops nearby until the uh, the, the uh, Almac shopping center was built, where you could go and shop. Yes, there was a drugstore up on the corner there. Uh huh. And it's gone now. Uh -huh. I see. And no grocery, no food stores. Well, no. Well, it. Thames Street and Spring Street wasn't too far, mm -hmm. so we get down there. No, none real close. Mm -hmm. And when you moved here, was there any place you could walk to that was very close by for shopping? No. Well, no. Spring Street down here. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are there any uh, neighborhood organizations in this area? Uh, where people get together or some sort of community center just for this little area? Down to Martin Luther King, yeah. there is a, they have a, a senior citizen uh, organization there. You, mm -hmm. I belong already. <laughs> and sure. uh, they have uh, things for senior citizens. Mm -hmm. Or oh, children too, mm -hmm. they go there. So. Well, it, it, that's of course for the whole community. Yes, but that's the, right. you don't have any of this just in this little no, street. No, uh, not sure. right in this street. Uh -huh. um, now, you you moved here in 1972, um, and was your husband still living at that time? No. When did he die? He passed in 1959. He passed in uh, November 1959. Mm -hmm. So then were you living alone in this house? Mrs. Williams lived with me. Oh, she did. When did she come to live with you? Oh, she worked with me in the nursing home in my um, Bellevue on uh, William Street. Uh -huh. I'm going to ask and you about that in a minute. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this nursing home on William Street had a name, did it? Yes. What was the name? Pilgrim's Rest. Pilgrim's Rest. Mm -hmm. Did you found it yourself? Did you organize it by the building and start the nursing home yourself? Yes, with the help. I was encouraged with um, the welfare. Was it the welfare? I guess so. Mm -hmm. They uh, encouraged me to. My husband was sick at that time. And... Uh, so I, I started the nursing home. How did you get the idea? Did, um, tell me how you, you went about it. Well, it was a lady, and she wanted to run with me. She wanted to be with me, and she was sick. She was in, uh, she had a stroke, I think it was. And, uh, of course, I took her, and while I had her, they thought it was may as well to go into the business and have others to come in too. Oh, no. Did you have her here in your house before you started your nursing home? No, I didn't live here before I had oh, my nursing oh, home. Oh, I see. I moved from there here. I see. But I bought this house quite a few years before oh. I moved here. Uh -huh. Well. Um, the building that you used for the Pilgrim's Rest, rest home. home was already on William Street, was it? Yes, uh, yes. What was the number there? 90 William Street. 90 William Street. Is the building still there? It is still there, and now it's a business center. Like, oh, they've got stores, and the, they the fixed the house over, they done got more stores in there and then, oh, I don't know, I mean, the place along there, just needs shop. I'm trying to think where 90 is. is it's that right across from Elmax. 
Oh, straight oh, across. Know. Where those they put three buildings together That's to make right. it. Oh, I see. I sure. Have three buildings then. Mr. Canavan built the garage and uh, he built an apartment up over the garage. Mm -hmm. He was a contractor, building contractor. Mm -hmm. And so that made it very nice. And then I bought the house next to that. Mm -hmm. And I joined it to the other house to make a bigger place. Mm -hmm. So we were able to accommodate 14 patients. Mm -hmm. 14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you always filled up? Always. Mm -hmm. yes. um, can you remember any especially interesting people who lived there with you? Well, one of the first uh, colored teachers in Newport lived there. Miss, what was her name? Miss Terrell. Mm. <laughs> so your first patient's name was? My first patient's name was Mrs. McCallum. Oh, that was my first patient, but I did have other patients. I had the, the first colored teacher of Newport as one of my patients, Mrs. Louise Phillips. Do you know where she had taught? She taught here. I don't know what schools, what school? what, what school she mm -hmm. taught in here, mm -hmm. but she did teach here in Newport. Mm -hmm. And uh, any more? well-known people you can remember? Oh, Mrs. Phillips, Mrs. Mrs. Collada Freeman, she was one of our uh, patients, and her father uh, preached here. He had a church here in Newport, and he preached here for a number of years, even before I came here. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Wheeler, one of the policemen that was here for a long time. Mm -hmm. He was one of my patients. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had quite a few. Mm -hmm. Did you have lines of people waiting to get in? Oh, yes. I bet you did. Mm -hmm. did. Did you really? Uh, now, um, what year did that, did you start your nursing home? I started in 53. 53. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, how many people did you have working with you? I had Mrs. Winifred Williams was one of my first, and uh, Miss Lily Mae Scott. Oh, how many people you said? Yes, I know. Oh, whoever yes. they were, if you can think of them. Mm hmm. Oh my goodness gracious, I've had so many different ones. Mm -hmm. What, uh, were they nurses or? Oh yes, I uh, um, had to have a nurse. Uh, you had to have a nurse and you had to have people to clean and mm -hmm. what That's else? That's right. Cook, oh, yes, yes, of course. wash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big operation. Yes, we mm -hmm. had quite a few. Did you enjoy that work? I did. I didn't think it was work. I just enjoyed it, so I didn't consider it working. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I just love folks. I mm -hmm. love people. Uh huh. Well, that's nice. Um, so you went on until 1972, did you say? Seventy-two. That's when it closed. Why did you close it? Because they wanted too much done to the house. They had. Want all the doors open out. Mm -hmm. and I, yes. And I couldn't go through that operation with the house, and then my children said I'd worked long enough. Mm -hmm. It was time for me to, <laughs> to stop, so mm -hmm. I had to stop. Well, what? where did the patients who were left go? Oh, we placed them in different homes. The last one was in... Providence, they died. She died this year, I believe, That's in sad. Providence Nursing Home there. Yeah, I can't How did it. the people feel when they found out they had oh, to go? Oh, they were hurt. They were hurt. And one, then uh, Jasper Hicks, 
He was one of my last patients. He was the last patient to go. He uh, had one leg. Mm -hmm. He was in a wheelchair. And uh, we moved him from my home to the Harrison Nursing Home up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he stayed there. And then they sent him from there. He got sick. Oh, he got uh, disabled one time, and they didn't keep them. So they, after he got better, they sent him to a home way, way away. But I mm -hmm. did go to see him up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, after you closed the building down, did you sell it? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. You didn't keep it any length of time. No, I didn't keep it in the end of time. Well, it was a, a very interesting career, and uh, did, how did you feel when you weren't doing that anymore? Did you find a lot to do? Oh, yes, I look like I'm busier now than I ever been. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know one thing to do is sing with the Swanhurst Chorus. Oh, yes. Now, how long have you been doing that? Oh, a number of years, I don't know. I, I really don't know when I started. It must have been. I don't know. Well, anyway, uh -huh. uh, what uh, what sort of voice do you have? Are you a soprano? A soprano. A soprano. And I'm not a great singer. <laughs> It's a very good chorus. It is. Uh -huh. And uh, Mrs. Williams sings with it, too. Yes, surely. Is she a soprano also? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> you must have a lot of fun with that. We do. You give um, how many concerts a year? I think it's three. Three? I believe so. Christmas, and the spring, and then they give a, a special concert. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have to rehearse a great deal? Once a week. All year long? Oh, no. Well, we have a, a few months during the summer. <laughs> oh, you get some time. Uh, yes, we do. But nearly the whole year. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you enjoy the rehearsals too? I enjoy the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Yes. You like to sing. Did you sing when you were a child at home? No. <laughs> no, not too much when I was a child at home. Mm -hmm. no. Family didn't sing much, huh? Well, yes, they did. They didn't sing the song that we sing in the swan. Now, I am told that you're a member of the, Nash, the Newport chapter of the National Association of Colored Women. Is that right? Yes. Uh-huh. How long have you been active in that? Since, my goodness, since 30, I should say 34. Oh, you're a really early member. And what sort of uh, work have you done in that? Do, do you have various jobs? Well, I've been most of the office, help most of the office that's in there. President? President mm -hmm. and secretary, mm -hmm. chaplain, mm -hmm. treasurer, and so are you an officer now? Yes. What's your position now? Treasurer. You're treasurer now. You get to handle the good part. Oh, I, <laughs> part I don't like to handle. <laughs> I guess they thought you had a lot of experience in that field. Um, how many members are there? We have at the present 15. We have 15? No, we have 20. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. we've had some new ones to come in. Uh -huh. How long has this chapter been in existence? 1905. Is that so? 1905 or 85? Can't be 85. 
1915, 1915, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, then the uh, Newport chapter must have worked on women's suffrage back in those early years. Well, I wasn't here at that No, time. I know you weren't, but I thought maybe you'd heard something about what they did. What do they do now? What do you do at your meetings? We, um, we give, uh, we, it's a charitable organization. We help wherever we can. We uh, give donations to different things that are worthy, like the, the uh, we have given to the uh, commerce here. What is that? Chamber of Commerce? Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Red Cross. Uh -huh. The NACP. Mm -hmm. And we give donations to different things and people that uh, need help, mm -hmm. that burn out on things like that. Mm -hmm. Do you ever meet with the NAACP? Have any joint meetings with them? No. Mm -hmm. We don't, but we, are, we donate to them. Mm -hmm. um, I understand you've been to some national conventions. Oh, yes. Did you go to Alaska? Yes. When was that? Last year. Where did you meet? We met in a hotel. Where? What city? Was it Anchorage? Anchorage. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. It was and Anchorage. how did you go? Plane. Oh, yeah. Did Mrs. Williams go too? Yes, she did. What a good time you must have had. And we did. Did you meet a lot of people there? A whole lot of people from all over the country. And Alaska. Well, I just didn't see as much as I'd like to see in Alaska. Oh, you're too busy, huh? I'm too busy in the convention. Uh -huh. But we did see a lot of things, strange things. Uh -huh. Iceberg, never seen did you? such a place. They've been there for years and years and still there. Uh -huh. uh, I wanted to see some of the animals, but I didn't get them out to see them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful place. I bet it was. Have you been to other conventions besides that? Oh, yes. You always I go. Oh. Where, else, where have you been? How many? Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. all out through the West, and San Jose, California, we've had mm -hmm. them there. Mm -hmm. and well, you really traveled well. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now, how do you, how does this, uh, I know from um, organizations I belong to that sometimes they'll pay your way, but sometimes they can't afford to. Do they, is the chapter able to pay your way, or do you have to do it yourself? You have to do it yourself. Yeah, I was afraid so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's well worth it. It is well, well, uh, well worth it. Yes, it is. Do you see some of the same people every year? Yes. Get some, well acquainted with them. And that's right. Mm -hmm. And so many pass, you don't see them. Yes, yeah, that's true. And it's great to meet the old friends. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, when you go to these conventions, what um, what's on the agenda? What sort of things do you talk about? You talk about what each organization has, is doing and have done in their part of the country, and you get new ideas how you can change and do some of the work that perhaps you wouldn't know about if you didn't hear it. To bring help. Yes. Mm -hmm. We exchange ideas with each other. And then we give the scholarship. OV. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what sort of scholarships are they? School to, to Children to young people that's worthy. College, college, uh, college, the first uh -huh. year in college. Any school they want to go to. Any school they mm -hmm. want to go to, we give uh, them the money. Mm -hmm. We don't give them; we send the money to the school. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Um, you mentioned that you're a member of the Martin Luther King Center. Um, what sort of things do you do there? Well, down to the what we do, I have to do to 
belong to the group there. They um, make a, they do a artwork. Oh. And they do uh, some ceramics mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. They get together and teach each other how to oh, do, do things. Sure. <laughs> do they have many meetings that you go to? Mm, yes, I think they, I haven't visited too many meetings down there. I belong to the King, Edward King's oh, yes, the senior center. Center. Center too. I, I mm -hmm. belong to too many. <laughs> I joined. I joined them when I was on the hill, and I just hate to uh, uh, come away from them because they take seem like to me more tours than they do here. Oh, you like the tours? I'd like uh -huh. to go. Sure. <laughs> and so I don't know. They do have line, line dancing yeah. that practice. Mm -hmm. I love that too. Oh, uh -huh, you like the dancing. Mm. And as I said, they have needle point. They have different things that they teach you. You take other. part in all those things. I love uh -huh. all of them. That's good. Uh, do you find a lot of your friends go there too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now I know that you have been a member of the League of Women Voters here in Newport. Um, there was a a league. Oh quite a few years ago in the early 70s and maybe in the 60s. Did you belong to it then? Yes. And you were, you were active in those days too. Did you ever hold any positions in the league? No. You just were a member. I just was a member. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, let's see. What other organizations do you have you belong to? Uh, I think you mentioned New Visions of Newport. Yes. Now, what sort of... Work do you do there? New Vision, we uh, help those uh, poor people that in need. <laughs> and they come in and uh, they uh, tell the story and they try to give them assistance mm -hmm. and help them out of their problems. Do you go in there a certain uh, day of the week or a certain time, no. regular schedule? No, I only go to the meetings. We do have girls that work there. Oh, I uh, see. Study. You belong and you go to the meetings. Yes. You don't actually act in No, no I don't there. have any uh -huh. job there. And other organizations. Oh, let's see. You said you... Um, Work for Meals on Wheels. Yes. How long did you do that? I have. I've worked for them for 12 years. You're still doing it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you say you had a pin? Yes, What's I just it? got my 12-year pin. Oh, from the Red Cross. From the Red Cross. How nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then what are the other organizations that you belong to? Oh, you mentioned United Church Women. Yes. Now, what do you do with them? Well, we meet once a month, and uh, we give, uh, we are a religious organization, of course, mm -hmm. and we help, where we have uh, a thought for the day, and you can get that on the TV, not TV, the radio, every day. Mm -hmm. It's a, On WADK? What radio station is it? Is it regular? Yes, the regular WADK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A certain time of the day? No, or any time. Any time of the day or night you can, yeah, press that. I think it's 847. Oh, you call a number? Yeah, you call a number oh, and I you see. can get it. Oh, it's free. Uh -huh. And uh, you'll get a message there. Oh. And it's always nice. And they, uh, as I said, they get new ideas uh, how to, Church Women United, how to help people too. We, uh, I think they, uh, we meet at the Salvation Army now for our meeting, and they've been given too, been feeding a friend. What is it? Feed a friend. Feed a friend. Yes, yes. that's uh -huh. right. 
and we do have meetings in different churches, and uh, one's coming up now, there, Mayfellow, now they're fall tea, mm -hmm. and we have speakers, and we find out, I mean, we get the message what they're doing in other parts of the country, mm -hmm. and we help where we can. Um, then what other organizations do you belong to? I think you mentioned the Hill Association. Hill Association. Do you do anything with them? Just attend meetings and pay your dues? Yeah, that's, I do that. Uh -huh. And they, um, they try to, they're into everything. Now they're working on the waterfront and and they are hill us they're parking and they are those things like that that come up they try to help out mm -hmm. planting trees and mm -hmm. making the place beautiful and uh, this is this Sherman Street is considered part of the hill, is it? Yeah. I never know just what the extent of the hill is. I think is. it ends of this street. Oh, is that so? <laughs> yes. uh -huh. You're almost in the point, too, aren't you? <laughs> yes. Almost. Uh -huh. um, do you belong to the Taxpayers Association? Y yes. I expect I... you should. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I belong to the Tax Association. They try to control the taxes. <laughs> Without much luck, huh? Not much luck, yeah. no. <laughs> do you do anything with them or just attend them? Just attend the meetings. Mm -hmm. They have a group that they seem to make all of their decisions and laws. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to ask you now something about uh, your feelings about Newport. How do you feel... Uh, do you have any feelings about the local and also the state governments? Do you think that they're pretty good, or what do you feel of them? No, I don't think they're so good. I think they could be uh, improved a great deal, a great deal. I, I can't understand some of the laws, and I think it's made the situation, living and everything else, uncomfortable. Do you think we've had um, good council members or would you like to see better council members? How do you think of, feel about that? We had, I think some of them has been good and some haven't been so good. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is that uh, the situation can't be changed a little bit. Now the um, policemen, I don't think they've given much uh, privilege as they should in protecting themselves. You think the policemen should have more power? Yeah, I do. Do you? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. And the parents, they can correct the children. And they are good parents as well as bad ones. And it takes the privilege from them, too. Child know if you do something to him, they can go to police, even for the mother. That's awful. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. You don't like the today's discipline? No, I rules, don't. Huh? No, I don't. I don't. Well, can you think of anything you specifically would like to see you know, the, the city government do? Oh, there's so many things. That <laughs> so many things that I would like for the government to do. We stop raising the taxes. <laughs> <one thing. laughs> yes, that would be a good thing. <laughs> uh, but in general, um, well, let me ask you one more thing. Yeah. Um, let me ask you how you feel about the status of the colored people in Newport. Do you think that um, they are treated fairly, or do you think that they should do more for themselves? How do you think that should go? I think they should do more for themselves, and uh, in doing more for themselves, maybe they could get more help otherwise. Do you think that um, 
there are enough jobs for them? Well, the jobs, I'm sure, are scarce, mm -hmm. but maybe they could get a few more jobs than what they are getting. Mm -hmm. I was watching that building going up the police station. I don't see any. I don't know where the genic... I don't see one colored man working out there. You don't? No, I don't. I haven't looked thoroughly, but I didn't... Just looking at them, I don't see one. I think it should have somebody. Yeah. So, so you John, think the city could do something? I help. think the city could do something, too, and they could do better mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any um, problem with drugs? In yeah, there's a lot of problems, mm -hmm. and yes. Mm -hmm. I Does your church try to help with that? Problem? Go yes. Home. They work with them. Yes, the church does help, try to help with the problem of drugs. Mm -hmm. And I understand whiskey is just as bad, you know? Probably. Yeah. Does the church, do the black churches in uh, Newport also try to uh, persuade the government to help with jobs for the Yes. Population. Yes, do they do. Too? Yes. How do they go about that? Well, they go to the um, what do you call it? City, City hall, council. the council meeting, mm -hmm. and they see what they can do there. Do you think they they're having any luck? Any they, success? Not much. Not much. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, something of a worry. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have written letters too, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, but on the whole, how do you feel about living in Newport? Living in Newport is great, I think. I, I, I like it here. It's a quiet place, and I don't believe it's. I don't think it's in the. Place anywhere else in the bed, I really don't. You don't long to go back to New York or Virginia? Oh, no, no. Uh, I've been here quite some time, longer than any other place I've been, lived except Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think it's been a longer year than I have in Virginia now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I get along very well and I. I like the people, and I think they like me. I don't know. They don't give me any trouble. I don't try to give them any. <laughs> so Newport is good, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't know any place that I would live other than here mm -hmm. at the press. Well, all right. We can stop there until our next interview. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Kahneman, the date is September the 26th, 1984, and we'll continue our conversation in the same place. Um, I'd like to ask you something about the Depression, because you came to Newport in 1932, too, when it was well underway. Um, you came here from New York, I believe. Yes. All right. Um, and you came here with your second husband, I believe. Is that right? Yes. And uh, what was his name? Charles Bell. Okay. Now, maybe uh, this would be a good point to go back a little bit into your earlier years, which we didn't really cover on the, at the last session. Um, for instance, before you married Mr. Bell, well, let's go all the way back to Franklin, Virginia, where you were born. Uh, and you say you were one of seven children born there, and you were number four. Number four. <laughs> and how many brothers and sisters were there? It was four girls and three boys. Uh -huh. And um, I don't think I asked you before your mother's and father's names. Daddy's name was Benjamin Story. Story. Mm -hmm. My 
mother's name was Lucy Ann. I said White Story. Uh huh. Yes. And um, tell me something about their families. Do you remember anything about your grandparents? I only remember my uh, grandfathers and one grandmother. Mm -hmm. Well, who were your mother's family? Her, their parent, her parents. Her mother was named Georgiana White, mm -hmm. and her husband was named Plummer White. Mm -hmm. P L U M B E R. It's an unusual name. P L U M B E R. Or M M E R. Well, never mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess it doesn't and how many children did they have? She had, they had fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen children. Uh -huh. And did they all grow up? They all grew up. Mm -hmm. And was, was that family farming also? He was a contractor for oh. farmers. I see. Mm -hmm. Did he keep very busy? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Did his children, his uh, sons work with him? Not all of them, no. Mm -hmm. Did uh, some of, any of them ever go into farming too? Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess there's lots of land down there. Yes, the it was. Mm -hmm. And what about your father's uh, father? His father was named David. Uh, your father, your grandfather's name was David Story? Yes. Mm -hmm. And your grandmother? I didn't know her. She died before I came on this, this scene, I uh -huh, suppose. Uh -huh. How many children do they have? You don't remember? No, I don't remember mm -hmm. how many. Did you visit back and forth with, you, forth with your grandparents very much? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Were, were you a close family? Yes, yes. Did you know all your cousins and aunts and uncles? Yes, just about. You must have had some big gatherings. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> did you get together at Christmas and Thanksgiving? Or? Not all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you were they close by? Yes. All in the, around Franklin. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where any of those people came from? Where the whether they were all born in Franklin or where they came from? Well, some of the husbands were from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Not all, Franklin. Mm -hmm. But you don't know where their parents came from. No, I it's don't. It's really going back far. All right. Now, um, you say you went to New York at one time when you were young. And uh, do you remember when that was? I went to New York when I was uh, eight. No, I was 20. You were 20? Yes. Uh -huh. And do you remember about what year that was? Nineteen twenties. Oh my goodness. And why, why did you go to New York? I went to New York to see if I could find some work to do. Mm -hmm. Was there anybody there you knew? My sister. Mm -hmm. What was she doing there? She was uh, doing dressmaking and finishing mm -hmm. in one of the shops. Mm -hmm. And was that downtown New York? That was downtown New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, you went to stay with her, and did you look for a job too? Yes. Where did you find one? With her. Oh, in the same factory? In the same place. Uh -huh. How yeah. did you like that? I liked it very much. Mm -hmm. It was sewing? It was sewing, mm -hmm. yeah. putting on snaps and making the hymns. Mm -hmm. Had you already had uh, practice in sewing at home? Oh, yes. We, we took some sewing in school. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> then, uh, and I think it wasn't long before you got married in New York. Is that right? Right. And whom did you marry? I married Mr. Um, Harry Jones. Harry Jones. And uh, what was he doing? 
He was chauffeuring for family. Mm -hmm. And uh, where did you all live? You mean after we got after married? After you got married. Well, I, we didn't live together right away. It was a secret marriage, and oh. I, I went home. You went back, back to Virginia. Back to Virginia. Oh, I see. For how long? For a whole year. Oh. Well, uh, when you finally came back, where did you live? When I finally came back, we lived on uh, 118th Street. Mm -hmm. Well, when did you have the nerve to tell your family you were married? <laughs> when I came back, I went to my sister's. I didn't go right with him. Uh -huh. And he came there mm -hmm. and claimed me. Uh -huh. <laughs> he then, told them about then, it. Then you had to let everybody know. <laughs> yes. How would your family feel about it? Well, my brother was sick. Oh, no. <laughs> he was very disappointed, and he was very unhappy about it. Oh. Mm -hmm. But he uh, he got all right after a while. Mm -hmm. After he got to know your husband, I yes. guess. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. Um, did you live um, in New York very long? Yes. Um, yes, we lived there till 1932. Oh, well, in quite a long time. Yes. And then did you have any children? Yes, I had one son, mm -hmm. 1922. What was his name? Harry B. Jones. He's, he was junior. Yeah, mm -hmm. junior. And you brought him up in the city? For eight years, we lived there oh, after he was born. Mm -hmm. And then where did you go? Mr. Bill, Mr. Canner, Mr. Um, Jones. Mr. Jones died in 1929. Mm -hmm. He had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And I came to New York in 1932. You mean you came to Newport? Newport, yes. yes. Uh -huh. And um, But while you were still in New York, um, you married someone else, didn't you? Yes, I married Mr. Bell. What was his first name? Charles. Uh -huh. And... Um, so, um, you came to Newport with him and your son, is that it? Yes. Well, why did you choose to come to Newport? Mr. Bell could not get into work in New York and was doing depression. Yes. And he found work here with a lady that he had worked with in New Jersey. Uh -huh. And, of course, he moved his family here with him. Uh -huh. What was the family name that she... Howard. The Howard family. Do you remember the first name? No, I don't. Uh -huh. And where did they live? They lived in Sunnyside Place. And that's near what? Near Bellevue Avenue. Uh -huh. This was one of the uh, big houses, was it? Well, not one of the estate, like Round the Drive. Uh -huh. It was just... He had a nice big house there. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, when you did come here, where did you live? You and your husband and little boy lived. We lived for about a year on 11th Street. And it's now the Boulevard. Oh, Memorial Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. And then Memorial Boulevard was two streets at that time. It was, I think it was Bath Road on one side, and then it was 11th. Yeah, the other? that's right. Oh, let's see. Okay, and um, so your son went to school in Newport. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he went to, to the usual public schools and, and up to Rogers. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, then, did he finish at Rogers? No, he didn't. He uh, went, I think it was three years ago. Uh, at Rogers, and then he went to uh, Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, for a couple of years. Was that a, a college? That's a college, uh -huh. right. He was then called to service. Oh, for the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened to him when he went in the service? Well, he's, he was in boot training, I believe they called that boot mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the wolf. Where, where did these, they send him for the training? 
Kansas City. Oh, <laughs> good long way from home. Yeah. And but did he have to go overseas? No, uh -huh. he didn't go overseas. Uh huh. Well, um, where is he today? He's in Springfield, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Married? He, he did marry? Yes, he was married. And did he have any children? No children. Oh, I see. You keep in touch with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go back to you in Newport. Um, we'll get back to the Depression in a little, in a few minutes. Um, now, when did, I believe, Mr. Uh, Bell died? And what, what year was that? He died in 1929. No, uh, I guess you mean 49. Mr. Bell? Uh-huh. Because you married him in... Oh, yes, in, in 49. Yeah, because you came... He Now, you were saying that Mr. Bell died in 1949. Yes. And um, when after his death, well, where were you living at that time? I was living in uh, 90 William Street. Uh, you and he bought that property together? Yeah. Yes. And so you continued to live there? Yes. Um, well, then it was while you were living there that you started your nursing home. Right. Um, called Pilgrim's Rest. Incidentally, I was wondering how you selected that name. It's a nice name. I selected that name because in Virginia I had a teacher and her home was named that and I thought it was so beautiful. Oh, isn't that a nice thought? Uh -huh. And it was an easy name to remember. And, right. Uh, mm -hmm. It just seemed very fitting, didn't it? Yes. Um, all right, so you were you running your nursing home when you married Mr. Canavan. Yes. And you said you married him in 1957? Right. And his name was Martin L. That's right. And um, what was his occupation again? He was a building contractor. Uh-huh. And uh, what sort of things did he build? He built houses. Uh-huh. He built the... Um, the garage, the apartment there, over top, and uh, the garage in the, at 90 William Street mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. So you had a house in the garage with an apartment at that time. Yes. And it was later that you. No, when did you buy the second house for Pilgrim's Rest? That was uh, quite a while later. Mm -hmm. It, you'd already had the nursing home yes, for a while I did. before you added that building. Yes. You needed more space. That's right. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, did uh, Mr. Canavan build uh, mostly private residences, or did he build public buildings too? Only, so Just, far as I know, private uh -huh. houses. Houses. Um, did he have any children? He had one son. Mark Canavan. Mm -hmm. And where is he now? He's in Providence. Mm -hmm. Did he become a building contractor also? Well, not a, well. Part of one is a wall hanger. Uh -huh. That's his job now, mm -hmm. and he does help renovate houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He got some training with his father. Yes. And uh, you said Mr. Canavan died in 1959, and you continued on running your. Your yes. Okay. Well, when you and Mr. <coughs> Bell, <coughs> excuse me, came here, um, he of course had a job, and he kept that job all during the Depression, did he? Yes. Uh huh. So you didn't have to worry about a living during the Depression. Um, <coughs> and did you have to work yourself to keep the family going? No. You didn't have to work either. Uh huh. Um, did you see uh, a lot of hard times in Newport? Were you aware that there was a depression, particularly? Yes, I was. What sort of things did you notice? Well, you couldn't really get everything you wanted to get the food, especially. 
Exactly. You just could get so much. And uh, your money only went so far? That, well, not only the money, but you just couldn't buy for so much. Oh, is that so? That's right. Mm -hmm. You get so much butter at one place, you couldn't get all that you wanted. Mm. And the prices of the food was high, too. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Where did you do most of your shopping? The A and P stores. And where were they at that time? That was down on Tim Street. Oh, mm -hmm. near what? Remember? Near the what was it near there? Let me see. Oh dear. It was near near the. Near what? Near the post near office, the post office. around that way, oh, down there. I didn't know there was one over there. Um, well, did you notice that your neighbors were particularly affected? Did you see what they were doing that might have made you think that they were having a hard time? <clears throat> I think we all was most affected uh, with the same thing, or by the same thing, in that you just couldn't get as much as you wanted of the things that you needed. Uh, mm -hmm. But you had what you had to have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear of the Civic Employment Association? Civic Employment? Yeah. Employment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was apparently something that uh, helped during the Depression here. Oh. Um, well, did you think that the Depression affected the rich summer people particularly? Did did you see them living in a less lavish way because of it? No. Didn't notice that at all? No, mm -hmm. didn't. Did you know anybody who worked for any of the rich people? Well, not exactly. Mm -hmm. no. So you don't know of any who lost jobs because of the Depression? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the New Deal policies help Newport people? Well, maybe in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not too much. You didn't know anyone especially who uh, benefited? No, I didn't. Okay. All right, well, let's tell, tell me a little bit about the Fall River Line. Did you travel on that? You mean the boat from the boat? The, the, from the here to... New York. Mm -hmm. Yes, when I first came here, I came on that first and second time. Oh, really? I came to Newport before I came to live to visit. Uh -huh. And I came on that line. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, when I came to stay, I came on that line. When I, and so it was very interesting. It was very nice to, I think, to travel that way. When did it leave New York? What time of day or night? <clears throat> it left New York there in the evening. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you spent the night on Spent the whole night on there. It got hit the next day. Could you sleep? Yes, you could if you could get a berth, but many times it was so crowded you just wasn't able to get a, oh, a berth. So. And you'd have to sit up. Yes. Oh. I remember once I did get a little place for my son, but I think I sat up all night and slept in the chair mm. because I couldn't get over. Mm -hmm. Did Did you, um, was there food on the boat that you could buy? Yes, yes, there was food. Was there any kind of entertainment? No entertainment. No entertainment. <laughs> you just entertained yourself. <laughs> just entertain yourself. I don't remember any entertainment. Mm. Do you remember the name of the boat? Oh, for goodness sakes, I really don't. Well, that's all right. There were several, I guess. <laughs> so you took two trips on it. Yes. You didn't go back to New York on it. Yes, I did. Oh, did you? Yes. Mm -hmm. First time I came, I went back on it. Oh, I see. That left in the evening, uh -huh. Newport. And I remember the uh, rich people, sometimes they were having the dinner or party and they held up the boat to wait for some of them to oh, get there to go on it. And they sometimes would come down in their pajamas. <laughs> Not pajamas, but in the 
uh, house of wear, you know, the evening gown. Oh, the evening clothes. Huh? Yes. Oh, all dressed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting to travel on that boat. Mm -hmm. Didn't get seasick. Well, no, fortunately, it was very calm so far. Was it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know any people who worked on the Fall River Line? No, not I didn't. So. Not mm -hmm. a soul. Did you ever go down and uh, watch the boats come in or go out? Yes. What did they do? What did who? What, well, I mean, what, how, <laughs> what did it look like to see them? It was uh, fun to see them come and go. What were they? What was the activity around them? Well, it was uh, very joyful. I was glad to, I guess, see them go, and some were sad. Mm -hmm. did, did you see any um, uh, passing, any uh, freight going on? No, no, I didn't notice that too much. Mm -hmm. I was too busy watching the people. <laughs> that was the people you wanted to see. Well, they're coming, going. Uh huh. Um, did you ever pay any attention to the the maintenance shops down on Long Wharf or on the point that kept the Fall River line going? Work, worked on. Didn't make any difference to you. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, when the steamship company went out of business, uh, did it mean anything in your life? Did it affect you at all? No, no. Mm -hmm. Do you think it uh, hurt any people living here? Oh, yes, I think it did. Some of them had a uh, connection with the boat. I think it did hurt them. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder, do you know if they lost jobs, what they did about finding new jobs? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I was... Um, well, a lot of tourists came on the Fall River Line to visit Newport. Um, did you have any opinion about those people coming here? Did they uh, intrude on your neighborhood or affect it in any way? No, not that I can remember. Mm -hmm. So you were, it, it wasn't like today, huh? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I imagine you have some stories to tell about the hurricane of 1938. You were here then, weren't you? Yes, you I were... was here, and it was the first hurricane. I didn't know it was a hurricane uh -huh. until it was all over. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> no, no. Even the trees next door to me, it was one tree next door that blew down. Uh -huh. And I still didn't know it was a hurricane. Uh -huh. I was about to fix dinner at that time. And my son was, and some of the teachers, he was in high school at that time, was down to the beach trying to save some of the people down there. It was a priest out there, and I think they threw a line to him or something, and they did manage to save, I think, one or two people. And he said he saw a man up pole. And uh, he couldn't hold no longer, so him dropped down. It it was terrible, and they didn't know it was a hurricane either. And they didn't get hurt, those, my boy and the teachers. You must have been pretty worried. Yes, I didn't know he was down there, though. Oh. And until he told me and he got home. He didn't have any trouble getting home? Well, he got home. I don't yeah. know how much trouble he had. Uh -huh. <laughs> and... Um, after it was all over, then I understand what it was. And I went down to the beach to see after the biggest storm was over. Still didn't know it was a hurricane. That was terrible. And, and it washed all the, the things away that was at the beach, the merry-go-rounds, all the amuse, amusement things. Mm -hmm. It was awful. The, Walls washed down, everything. Mm -hmm. It was a terrible mm -hmm. storm. Did you um, see a lot of other trees down? Yes. And the, at that time, there wasn't a, a, a shopping center over there. It was Mr. Whitehouse lived there, his estate. Mm -hmm. 
and then he had his barns and lots of fruit trees and things, and they were all blown to pieces over mm -hmm. there. And it was just a terrible storm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, do you remember what kind of work had to be done to clear it all up, and who, who did the work? Well, I had to hire extra people to do it. I, the city did, I guess, a lot of it, too. Mm -hmm. And it was Did all. it take a long time to clean it all up? Oh, yes. It mm -hmm. took quite a while. Mm -hmm. The uh, wind even blew a tree over the other side of my garage, tucked the top of it and landed right over partly on the porch going up to the apartment. For goodness sake. But it didn't break any part of the house. Well, you were very lucky. I was. Of course, you were in a pretty safe part of the island, yeah. being where you were. You weren't near the water. No. And um, a good place to be. I thought so. Mm -hmm. So you, you went right on cooking all the way through it and didn't know <laughs> <laughs> Well, I stopped to watch the storm. I didn't continue cooking. Oh. Well, <laughs> I had to see what was going on outside. Did all the lights go off? Did you have electricity? Yes, we had electricity, and I don't remember that going off. That's strange. Oh. It was, God was good to us. Yeah, you should so, say so. Yes. Well, uh, there were some hurricanes after that one. Yes. But um, I guess that was the, the most noticeable one. That's right, it, it was. Mm -hmm. the most. Well, and the next big event that came to Newport, I guess, was World War II. And at that time, of course, a lot of Navy people came into town. Um, do you think that that was a, a help to Newport to have all those new Navy people in, or how did you think it affected? I think it was a great help. It gave uh, people, uh, more people to have shop in their stores, and, and some people had housed to help house them mm -hmm. and I think it was a great help to have mm -hmm. them here. Mm -hmm. Did anyone in your family go to the war? No. Oh, your son? No. Your son? No. Well, no. he was in Only, training anyway. Yes, that's all. So yeah. he was in the army. But yes, he was in the army. For training. He had to go overseas. No. Um, did you know anybody uh, who was working at Fort Adams when they were doing all of the um, building defenses and so on around Newport? No, I don't know nobody worked at Fort Adams, mm -hmm. okay. but I went to work there <laughs> and when they, that's last war. Uh -huh. Well, where did you work? I worked at Old Peter Station. Oh, on Goat Island? Yeah. Oh, not, when, not, when did you start doing that? Right after the beginning of the war or did you wait? No, it was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, find out about the work over there? From different people you that worked there. Yeah, uh -huh. right there. And you went over and, and applied for a job? I applied for a job. Uh -huh. Well, what sort of work did you do? I made uh, shells, ammunition for them. You did? Yes. How, how long? Uh, what were your hours? My hours was from Eight to what? Seven or eight? Eight hours a day. Eight hours was a day. Uh -huh. I started eight o'clock in the morning. Did you have to work Four on Saturday? Two. Saturdays? No. It was no. just a five-day week. Five-day uh -huh. week. Um, well, you made the shells. Uh, tell me what sort of how did what did that involve? Can you remember? <laughs> it what involved you did? two or three powders. You had a machine. Uh -huh. And you had to measure this powder to put into the I forgot <laughs> into this uh, little gadget you had, mm -hmm. and uh, then you had to press it down, you know, to to make it. It was a it was unique and it was really fun to make it. You really enjoyed it. Yes, I did. I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and you had to make so many of them. Per day? Per mean? day. Oh. The men, they worked there before we did, and they didn't have, they didn't make as many as we made. 
and, so? and they called that, and they got away all right with it. I don't see why we had to make so many. We had to make 300, I think, 350. Because the women had to make more than the men? And did you work with just with a lot of women? That's right. So they put all, all the women together in one Put area? all the women, to, all the women in that shop where I was working was hmm. all women. And to put the men that was working there before we went there as overseers. Oh, is that so? Yeah, they sit down, put the feet up on the chair, and watch what we do. What would they do if they didn't think you were working hard enough? Do the same thing? No, I guess not, though, because everybody was trying to make that quarter. There. Everybody was working hard as they could, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. well, what happened if you didn't make your quarter? Well, that was okay, too. You just really you just. You still got your pay. Yeah, you still got your pay. But you were supposed to do a certain thing. Yes. Uh -huh. And everybody, how many women were there? Can you have any idea? No, I don't remember how many were in was the shop. Was it a big room? Yes, there? it was a big room. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? So you you uh, put this together. When you got through, did you have a bullet over here? If you'll excuse <laughs> my ignorance. <laughs> Yes, so you had a, a tray you had to put them in. Oh, I see. So you had a completed shell and you put it in the tray. Yeah. Well, you must have gotten a little tired, wasn't that kind of monotonous well, sometimes? I really don't know whether it got tired or not, <laughs> but uh, it wasn't. You had to be fast to do it. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, well, could you talk to each other while you were working? Or did you just have to sit there and work hard? I think you could talk to each other. So it was kind of, uh, you had good companionship? Yes. Also. Mm. Uh -huh. And then you'd have, what about your lunches? Did you take your oh, lunch yeah. with you? or You took your lunch with you, or you could go down to the cafeteria and get a lunch. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you gave you so, so many minutes to eat. I think it was a half an hour or just something like that. Just half an hour? Maybe. It, Mm -hmm. It was a really hard a war effort, I guess. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, was that ammunition used um, for practice on, locally, or was it really sent overseas? It was sent, sent overseas, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really interesting. And did you work there until the very end of the war? Well, yes, just about, just about. Mm -hmm. and, Worked until they discontinued the operation. That's right. Uh -huh. And men been working there for forty some years, I think. Of some of them, thirty some. They had long before they took on these extra people. Uh -huh. you know, it was most well, it was men too. As I said, it was only women in my shop. Uh -huh. And they cried when they said it was the end. And I was so happy. I cried. You cried for joy. <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> I was so glad to get over that place. Uh, you were, were you mean you were tired of the job by that time? Mm, well, I thought it was time to quit. Mm -hmm. I was just tired. Mm -hmm. You had to make time, you know. Mm -hmm. And yes. then it was a lot of pressure. It so. was, and it was for me because I had my husband uh, at that time was uh, Mr. Bell. He was uh, sick. He had a stroke. He and he was sick for about three years. Oh. And at that time, somebody had to be with him all the time. Oh. So I was glad when it was so. How you managed? I don't either, but I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so since he was ill and he couldn't work, then your your part of the income really mattered. Yes, it mm -hmm. did. But I'm not sure that you felt happy have the war over too. I was. Mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. Very happy. Um, well, when the war first started, um, I understand that quite a few defense installations were put around Newport and around the island, uh, like anti-aircraft guns. Did You knew about that work going on, I suppose, what was being done. Yes, and did it make you feel uh, that you were safer to have those things, or did you think, for good heavens, it made Newport a target for the enemy? Well, I think I felt that it was safe, even in our shops in the daytime. No, it was in the nighttime. It was, they had uh, 
uh, blind uh, curtains, you know, around. Blackout curtains? Yes, uh -huh. yes, so you couldn't see outside. Oh, even in the day? At, oh, at nighttime. At nighttime, uh -huh. of course, in the day they couldn't see. Yes. And it was, it was awful feeling to I be see. shut in like that. Did you have to have blackout curtains in your house? No. You didn't have those? No, I, I don't remember having those. Because houses along the coast did have those. Yes, but I suppose yes. Since you were so far from the water, it didn't yes. really matter in your area, huh? Um, now, of course, a lot of people came to Newport, or so I understand, to work uh, at the torpedo station. Uh, did that have any effect on your neighborhood? Did it mean that there were more people living near you at all? No, no. Because mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, it was no, it, it was all filled up anyhow. Oh. So you so couldn't come in there. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you um, remember anything else, especially about the war, particularly? Um, well, like the end of the war, were there any special celebrations for VE Day or VJ Day? Oh yes, we and still have uh, those uh, services mm -hmm. for it. Were you working on VE Day at the torpedo station? You know, after uh, the people, our armies went into Europe and the Nazis were driven out. Do you remember that? Mm, I. Don't remember right now mm -hmm. what what happened mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's um, talk about more another topic. Um, you said that you attended some of the jazz festival performances. Oh yes. Did you go to the first one? I think it was the first uh -huh. the first jazz festival. Do you remember where? Cardine. Feel free body park. Free body park. Were free out. body park. That's the first right. one was held in the at the casino. Yes. Did you go to yes, that one? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Do you remember the performers especially? I don't remember their performance, but they were beautiful performance. And uh, at that time, the wealthy people were also going there to mm -hmm. see. They would come in there evening gowns from the dinners they and it was beautiful mm -hmm. everything was so nice mm -hmm. and uh, then they went out in the park mm -hmm. it got so crowded yes mm -hmm. and that was beautiful too did you go every year i went every year you were really really enthusiastic yeah, i uh -huh. was did, yeah. which uh, musicians and performers do you did you particularly like Oh, I like uh, Mary Bailey mm -hmm. and uh, oh, uh, there's a lot of them I enjoy ha seeing. I mm -hmm. can't remember the names now, but uh, they, some of them, a few of them are still going mm -hmm. and some died. Mm -hmm. and did you ever hear Duke Ellington? Oh, yes, yes, that and his sister. Good. Oh, I didn't know he had a sister. Duke Ellington? Let me see, was it Duke Ellington? Well, it could be. I just don't remember her sister. Was it, I think there were several in the family, but I don't know. Yeah, I think it was him. Uh -huh. He played down to the beach since, since the jazz festival. Uh -huh. um, Did you ever hear Louis Armstrong? Yes, yes, I heard him too. Mm -hmm. And what about um, Ella Fitzgerald? Yes, yes. Oh, Fitzgerald. She's a color baby, isn't mm -hmm. she? Yes, sure. of sure. Beautiful voice. Yes. And Marin Anderson, did she didn't come here, did she? No, no. I, don't, no. Think so. I don't think she came mm -hmm. here. Oh, and oh dear. Well, I did all you of just, those big stars. You just liked all. All oh, I liked all of them. Mm -hmm. They were um, my favorite. Well, what was Newport like during? The festivals was it um, crowded? Or? It was crowded, always, mm -hmm. always crowded. Mm -hmm. Some trying to climb over the fence or climb up to the top there, mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and it was beautiful. Well, then in the late '60s and early '70s, there were some 
problems. There were riots and um, people misbehaving. Did any of those get over as far as your neighborhood? Uh, did it bother your neighborhood no. at all? No. That was too far away. No, uh -huh. they didn't. Um, did you see any of those um, troubles, any of the crowds storming the field? And then they stuff? moved from here out to a festival field, they called it. Mm -hmm. It's now a project out there. Mm -hmm. that well, did, did the uh, crowds bother you when they started misbehaving that way? No. You weren't, did you go to those performances when they were oh, yes. rioting? No, no, I never went at night, <laughs> not oh, out I there. See. I see, I Only in the daytime I did go, uh -huh. but I heard they had uh, some bad times. You didn't see them? Yourself. No, I didn't see mm -hmm. them, no. Well, you were prudent and stayed away. And I did. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, the, the, con the festival should have gone on after 1972? It was the last year they held it, I believe, 71 or 72. Um, do you think that they should have continued them instead of letting them stop? Well, it was a nice thing to have here, I think, to bring those uh, big uh, actors here to Newport, since we couldn't get to New York. Uh, not New York, where they were down California and Florida and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. I think it was nice to bring them here so people could see them. And it would have been nice, I guess, if they could have you missed them. kept it on. Yes, I like those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, do you think the police did a good job in handling the disturbances? Did you hear about how they managed them? Um, of course, a, a big event in the history of Newport in the recent years um, was the pullout of the Navy fleet. Um, did you realize before it happened that the fleets were the fleet was going to be leaving? The ships would be leaving Newport only through talking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you think that that made a big difference in Newport? Do you think it was good or or bad for the city? I think it was kind of bad. I really do. How do you think it affected the city? As I said, we don't have uh, the housing. All of the houses that they built for the uh, fleet or for the Navy to be here, they're st still out there, I mm -hmm. guess. The, and they're deteriorating and gone to nothing when they could be used, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, that's bad. Mm -hmm. Well, did you, do you think that it affected many people's jobs to have the fleet go? Yes, I do. A lot of our people here had jobs that they now don't have that when the fleet was here. Did you know anyone particularly? No, I don't know anyone particularly. Mm -hmm. Do you know, do no. you know what, what sort of work they went to from the Navy work? Or did you hear about that? No, I, I don't know. I don't have a big family of my own here, and I don't know much about the others. It didn't make any difference to your neighborhood, I suppose, because not many Navy people lived in that area. That's that right. Uh -huh. um, did you hear of the local government or the state government doing anything to help? the people who were put out of jobs by the Navy leaving? Nothing there. Huh? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now I want to ask you about the, the Newport Ferry and the bridge. Did you ride the ferry over to Jamestown or the mainland very much? Oh, yes. You did? I did. Where were you going? Uh, going to church over there many times. Oh. It was a little church over there, and then I had a friend. That was on Jamestown, was That it? lived over in Jamestown. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I used to go back and forth to see them. Did you enjoy the ride? I did, and sometimes you just take a ride just to be riding. Did you? Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, the cross the ferry and back was very good. Uh -huh. How long did it take? About half an hour, I think. That's all? Mm -hmm. Was it ever very rough? No, 
I never gone on if it's very rough. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any certain ferry boats? The names or anything about them? I certainly don't. Uh -huh. No, I don't. Uh -huh. How many people worked on the ferry boats? Do you remember? Very I don't. many people on them? No, I don't. Uh -huh. Wasn't very many people. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of any problems in keeping them going? They were maintained on Jamestown, and um, I just wondered if you knew whether the, the business over there had any troubles. I don't remember in the business. I just rode on the boat. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about the mm -hmm. upkeeps of it. And sure. Working on it. Were the ferries always crowded? No, not always. Certain days. Mm -hmm. I guess um, on Sunday, when you would go over for, for church, it was fairly lightly yeah. traveled on. Um, well, when you heard the bridge was going to build from Jamestown over here, how did you feel about that? Well, I felt that probably it would be a good investment and you could go when you want to and come. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to wait for the boat. That was good. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see how they were going to do it, but they did it. <laughs> and I still can't understand how they could build that bridge across there. That's a big bridge. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And were you gonna, did, did you think you'd miss the ferry rides, though? <clears throat> well, yes, you do miss it. still miss it because it's nice in the summertime to mm -hmm. get on that mm -hmm. boat and go across. Mm -hmm. And I don't see why they sold it. I see why they didn't keep one of them. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have. Yes. Um, now, as you know, a lot of work has been done, um, not so far from you, on restoration and redevelopment of the old houses in Newport the old houses that were built even before the Revolution, well, I guess soon after the Revolution, because most of them were torn down during the Revolution. Um, and I wondered if that affected you in any way. Were you glad to see that kind of work done? Well, yes, I did. I was glad, and I am glad to see some of the re renovations and they have done a lot. They even bought my house where it was on uh, William Street mm -hmm. and they made that into a shopping center, or oh, I think they call it, I don't know, oh, I haven't noticed the name there yet to see what they really call that. Mm -hmm. But there's several, several stores made into that building. And do you think it's a good idea? I think so. Mm -hmm. It's right there doing the, near the shopping center, mm -hmm. Bell Shop. Bellevue Shopping Center, mm -hmm. and all the people that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise, they do get. Mm -hmm. And they have made a wonderful, wonderful shopping, I don't know what, the, a center. Uh -huh. I haven't noticed it too much myself. We pass it, but it's your, when you're driving, you can't stop to look. No. Someday we should go over and look at it and really see what it looks like. Yes, the manager took me in on the bottom floor exactly. and let me see what was there. Uh -huh. And they left most of the rooms, just, they just attached uh, pieces onto it, didn't tear down one building. Uh -huh. They got all three of the buildings standing. Uh -huh. And most of the stairway, the same as the work when that, that fireplace and the chimney. Mm -hmm. And the front room is right there where mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. And the floors are left as they were. And they are t just uh, connected other parts, they extended it. Well, then they're really doing a nice job. They're doing a nice you job. of what they're doing to your yeah. houses. Yeah, the garage, they didn't even tear that down. The garage, they just put on to it. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful job. I never seen anything like it. Well, that's good to hear. Was that an old house in the and first place? Yes. Do you know how old it was? I guess it's one of the first that was built because it wasn't any nails used in building it. It was all pigs. Is that so? I noticed that when I lived there. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I just think, I don't know if exactly how old it is. Mm -hmm. but, it's, but one of the early ones. It's one of the early ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad they're keeping it in such good condition. I am too. <laughs> um, did you know any people who worked on re restoring any of the houses? Or who restored them? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, I suppose uh, that quite a few people who lived in the houses that were restored had to move out. Did you know anybody who was affected that way? Usually when they restore those houses, you move out. If you move back, you have to pay, I don't know what. Uh, I don't know of any house that has been restored that a person owned and moved back into it. You didn't know anybody who had to go yeah. find another place to live because mm -hmm. we were put out of the, of the house. They're, they're restoring some of the houses out in the park home in um, Camden Hill now and some of the tenants has to move out. Then they're going to move back in that same house. Mm -hmm. I know one family, Mrs. Jones, mm -hmm. she's just moved out of her house that she was living in and said they're going to restore it. Then she's going to move back there. Oh, that's nice. She's not going to be put out permanently. No, no. Mm -hmm. That's good. So they are doing so. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, you think Newport is benefiting by all the restoration? I think so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. One way. <laughs> you must have seen quite a difference in the appearance. Yes. Um, with all the changes in housing. Yes. Especially around. Um, the Point area and down on Thames Street. Hey, right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, um, as you know, the uh, America's Cup races are not going to be held in Newport again for the foreseeable future. Um, did you pay any attention to the last race when Australia won last year? Well, yes, I did. I. Um so the boats, they were all beautiful. I met uh, some of the young men, and I, of course, I couldn't have talked to them because I didn't understand that language, and they didn't understand mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so uh, it was very interesting to see these boats, and, and I saw the change of, they, you know, they demonstrate how they, I guess, change gods, how they do on the boat when they change. It was very interesting, very uh, beautifully done, I think. And uh, I was ha I was somewhat in favor of some other country winning the uh, cup because we've had it all these years, and I think the other countries got tired. They must have got tired of coming here mm -hmm. and never win something, and I think this is going to help a great deal. Mm -hmm. And I hope uh, America will go wherever it is next time and win and bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see it come back to Newport? Oh, oh yes. Uh -huh. You think um, it was good to have it here I Newport. think it was good to have it here, mm -hmm. and I'd love to have them to go and win it and bring it back. Uh -huh. Did you like having all those people from other countries come to Newport? I did. I did. I thought it was very interesting to have them here. Mm -hmm. you know. Only thing I regret, I couldn't talk their language. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't even talk to the Australians? <laughs> no. They have a strange form of English, don't they? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> did you see the, the boats come back with the final race when Australia was the winner? Did you go down to, say, Fort Adams or anywhere else to watch them come in? Yeah, I went down here to the, to the bay. Uh -huh. And, and the demonstration and the blowing and the different lights and things was beautiful. Really it was beautiful, them. yes. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy for them. I really was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was sorry for the <laughs> sorry for the Newport of the Americans. Mm -hmm. I was sorry. Mm -hmm. But you got to lose sometime. You ought to be a good loser too. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they'll come back someday. I hope so. You're going to be paying attention to them in Australia this, uh, whenever it is, two more years? Oh, oh I yes. I guess it'll be on television. Yes, I'll watch them. Uh -huh. I'll watch them, and I hope the American will win. <laughs> <laughs> Have another turn. Have another turn. Uh -huh. 
Well, is there anything else you'd like to tell me before we stop our conversation, Mrs. Kahneman? Well, I don't think so. Nothing special. I. All right. Well, I been... thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's been a lot of fun to do this. It's been fun talking with you. <laughs> Wish I could tell you more and well, knew more about the things you asked. You told me a great deal. Mm -hmm. Thank you.